Hello, I'm Alexa. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a San Francisco based product designer and today I'm doing a video with an aspiring UX designer who lives in Orange County, California and her name is Catherine. Hey, this is Catherine. I am a UX UI designer. This video is a part of a two part series. Did you miss the introduction? So I set off to work with a few designers on crafting the right story for their online portfolio, which by the way, would be different than their offline one. If you did, make sure you go back and watch that video first so you can get some context. Catherine just wrapped up a UI UX immersive program through Career Foundry. Actually, let me have her introduce herself. My UX journey started around a year ago when I was looking into a new career that would both combine my analytical side with my creative side, my visual approach to problem solving and explaining my ideas, and also my interest in people and their motivations, which I've been pursuing with Career Foundry, which is an online education platform um, with a course on UX UI design. So with this video project with Alexa, I'm really hoping to fulfill two goals, which is to work on my storytelling abilities and to also build my personal brand. So I'm really excited with this video project and seeing how I can further myself and become a better designer. So thanks. Today we're going to be going through one of Catherine's projects called Rally. At a glance, Catherine's project looks like great work. It's clear that she spent a lot of time on this and she should be proud of it. I like that she's included some shots of the final design at the top of the page so we can get a, a sense of what the project is about. But as we scroll down the page, it starts to get really dense, which is not uncommon for people who decide to put case study projects on their website. Let's dig deeper into this though so we can try to figure out what this project is about. The brief reads, Language learning apps and tools are so accessible nowadays that it's easy to find many people currently learning a language. These tools, however, lack a vital component of learning, immersion. Okay, I'm not sure this is a strong problem statement yet. It doesn't read well to me. Um, I don't know, I don't think I'm convinced. So if immersion is the solution, what's at the root of the problem? Is immersion going to help them learn faster? Is it going to help them learn skills that will last them longer in life? On our call with Catherine, I'm going to ask her a bit more about how she came up with this statement so we can better understand where she was coming from. Then her goal reads, I wanted to design a product that provides a way for people to learn a foreign language through practical lessons and conversation practice with live video chat. Okay, so I like that Catherine has a goal statement, but I don't think it's the right kind. Sure, this may be her personal goal, but I think what would be stronger here is a goal that's related to understanding the success of the product. So I'm going to challenge her to rewrite this. And then comes all this dense and in-depth research work she's done for the project. But if I were reviewing her portfolio as a hiring manager, I would first want to see the final designs so that I could better evaluate if the problem statement is aligned with what she's made. This means moving the final designs from the bottom to the top. Again, the purpose of your online portfolio should be to tell the short story of you and your work because you want to get companies excited about potentially working with you. This is a great way to capture their attention. We can see here that Catherine has included five screens in the final design section. What I really want to see at this point is how she's designed the product to help people become more immersed in the language that they're trying to learn. I see she's got a login screen here, which is important if you're actually building the product, but since this project is about immersion, I just don't think it's necessary. I'd rather have her highlight parts of the product that help explain how this helps people learn language faster or to fix whatever the root problem is. Essentially, since she's designing this product from scratch, I think she should be highlighting designs that show how her solution is different to what's out there. The last thing I want to highlight before we hop on this call with Catherine is that I noticed all the way at the bottom that she's included a section about the design language that she's created for this product. This is super cool and design systems are super important nowadays. Where I work, we have a team of designers and engineers whose job it is to just focus on designing and building our design system. So if Catherine is interested in this sort of work, that's great. But I may recommend instead that she moves this work onto a separate project page so that she can tell the story for interests in design systems more precisely. Okay, I think that's all for now. Let's call Catherine. Hello. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. All right. I just wanted to start by kind of going through the project, maybe just going through and asking some questions just so I can better understand more about this project. Yeah. So I, and actually, I love that you have this image at the top because it helps give an idea of what this project is going to be about. But before we jump into this, do you mind explaining to me more about this project? Um, what type of project is it? How did you come up with the brief? So I created this project for Career Foundry, which is the online 
online like immersive UX program that I've been doing to uh, for career switch. So I, the premise was a language app with a like a video talking feature, yeah. so you could have like live practice. Because um, that's honestly to me the most important part about learning a language. After studying, you know, Spanish for eight years, and then also learning um, Brazilian Portuguese on my own time when I went to Brazil. Um, so to me, I know what works and what doesn't work. And after doing user interviews with people, a lot of them said like they really enjoy learning uh, languages through YouTube as well. And I never really considered YouTube as like a language learning um, resource. So I really wanted like video based. Um, content to learn and also that um, ability to chat with someone um, live as well. So a little bit of feedback. So I really like that you have the brief, the goal, and the discovery content towards the top. What I'm, I don't think you're quite hitting yet. Typically the very first thing I look for on everyone's portfolio projects is the problem statement. So you have the word brief um, and you've used the you've used goal too, which I usually look for the goal. I think I would challenge you to really try to refine your brief and change it into a problem statement. And I think that will help you really get clearer about what that problem is, like at the core of it. Sounds like there's something there to do with immersion, but like why is immersion the solution? Why are you designing for this? Is it because immersion is going to help people learn language faster? Is it because it's going to help them learn language in a way that will last longer in their lives? Is it going to help them create connections? Like what's missing right now? What, like what's that problem? So then that will help set the stage for your whole project. Backing up again, I first come to a portfolio page, I look for the problem, I look for the goal, I'll look for a little bit more, um, I'll look for a couple other details like the type of project, if it was a team project, like what your role was, and then I look for the solutions. We've hit the one, the second one there, which is the goal, but I also, I, I don't think you've quite written it in the right way. I think it's really great to hear that this was like a personal goal for you, like you wanted to um, design a product that provide, you know, I wanted to design a product that provides a way for people to learn. That's great, personal goal. Um, but what's the goal of this product? Like, what's success mean for this product? Like, think of it from a business sense, in a customer sense too. But like, what are their like? What would it mean for this product to be successful? Like, what are the metrics? Anytime you can include metrics, especially quantitative ones, as a way for like understanding success for your project, that will usually make you stand out. Um, and typically, we see metrics. Metrics are easier when it is a real thing because um, it's just more realistic, but if you can start to use that language on your, like, earlier on, um, I think it'll help you stand out, just because it's like, oh, you're thinking about it. Okay. Cool. And then, yeah, I think you're missing maybe a couple other details here. It's really good, it's helpful to hear, like, what type of project this is, if it's personal, if it's a client project, like, if, you know, if it was a product you worked for your, your job, like, just kind of giving that detail helps set some context. If you're a new designer, you know, you're typically... Uh, interviewing for jobs that are like entry level or internships so it's known that you don't have real world pro projects to show and that's totally fine just be clear about it it helps people just evaluate it and get that context that will help them properly uh, be able to evaluate the project and then also better ask you questions i think that's it for the top section basically after that you know this is great you've like got so much work here you're hitting a lot of the really important steps and trying to understand the patterns that we need to understand to design for people uh, which is really great. If I was evaluating this project, though, like like I would for uh, like the initial screening, I think it still is really dense. And this is really common. I see a lot of case study projects. Again, this is something that um, someone else may have different advice for. But you know, as, as far as my experience goes in reviewing portfolios, I just know I review a lot of them at a time, and it takes a lot for me to try to really consume and understand all of these projects like already so I'm not gonna be able to like I wouldn't go through this in depth like that I just I would I would skip it over that's not necessarily what everyone does like I said but as far as uh, my philosophy goes to all this I think the goal of your online portfolio is to capture the attention of a design recruiter or a hiring manager um, and get them excited about you and your work and so I think that means focusing on things like the problem statement like the goal showing the solutions so that they can make that connection and once you've crafted that story properly then maybe it's just like all this work just needs to go underneath that so that like you've caught their attention okay they're in what are some of these other ux related skills that she has that are part of the process just put it underneath i still think like i would i would probably recommend trying to um cut it like simplify it down a bit more um but only because uh, i want to move most of this and even like expand upon it in a, a bigger way in your offline portfolio. So um, this is 
totally up to you. And again, I'll follow up with you with some more specific feedback. But um, I, I do think it might be useful to sort of cut some of this down. Um, I've never read like any of, any of the paragraphs of text in people's case studies just because it's unrealistic timing wise. It takes way too much time. Does that make sense? What do you think? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I actually saw that in like a Instagram post um, or near your story once where um, you suggested like there's an offline version, but I just didn't really know like how much to put in the online. So this is helpful. Cool, cool. Good to hear. I wanted to, again, like if we put like, let's pretend I'm reviewing your portfolio for a job. Um, I, I usually start up here. I try to understand, again, the problem, problem statement is super important. Um, I try, really try to understand that, and then I want to see how that relates to the designs. So if I was reviewing this portfolio, I would have scrolled all the way to the bottom. It's like, cool, you got this stuff. But I'd scroll all the way to the bottom and try to, I would review this work to try to see if that answered the problem. And, yeah, and so I think, uh, I mean, this work looks really strong. And it, again, it's clear you've put so much time into this. But I'm wondering if you could expand more on more into detail as to how what looks like these la maybe these last two screens, like how that really solves the problem, or maybe like this needs to be more of like a flow, and it's explained more in like a like a like a scenario. I um, the last person who I met with had a video on his website for the final designs, and I think that's like a great way to show a story, like a short story. Um, and get like people watch videos. I always watch videos when I re review portfolios because it's a great way to like understand an idea and you can really walk people through something in a fast way, which is what it's all about. So maybe you want to put together a video, um, but I would really recommend moving these up closer to the top and then, um, you know, maybe you don't need to include the, the like sign in login screen. Like that's not a part of the problem you're solving. Sure, you'll need to have a login screen if you want to um, build a, a real product, but we're not focusing on that problem specifically about logging in. Like logging in itself, I think could be a, its own project page, right? Um, we want to we want to really focus in on how you've designed something to help people learn language in a more immersive way. Again, for a reason that you still have to define, whether it's because people need to learn language faster, you know, whatever that reason is. We want to capture that here with these designs. What do you think about that? Yeah, but, I mean, I'm already thinking of ways to address what you're saying, maybe through like a, like a breakdown of the features and like how those features came about or how those features change, um, so things like that. Well, cool. I'm like, yeah, great. Just you talking about <laughs> that too, I'm excited to see where you're going to take it. <laughs> awesome. And then the last thing that I wanted to cover with you, I love that you have this design language system. This is super cool, um, super in right now to a lot of, most of the big tech companies, especially out here in San Francisco, have design system teams. Like at Zendesk, for example, we have a group of uh, like three designers and at least three engineers right now, three or four engineers, who, whose job it is, is to just design our design system. And so it's, it's like a, it's a thing now. Um, and so I think it's really cool that you've thought that through. And I think it's good you've included it here at the bottom of the project page if you're going to include it on this project. However, because design systems are becoming roles that people will actually apply for and be specifically working on those teams, I see this work as its own project on your homepage. I think like if you wanted to become a design systems designer, this could be a good project that you could show to speak to that, to that work. But I don't necessarily think it's related to your initial problem statement, right? So it might just be mm -hmm. adding more to the page that, again, makes it feel like this really dense, like heavy project. I think definitely keep it. Uh, I just don't think it should be on this page. And then if we're talking about your offline portfolio, like when you're showing the full project, like presenting it, it could be a good time to bring it back. And you could mention, oh, I also have this interest in design systems, thought through it, here, like here are some examples. And then you can show some of this work. Thanks for sharing. That was super helpful. Yeah. Okay, cool. I would love it if you would go through this project and refine it and mix some things up based off of the feedback. And then have you started interviewing for any jobs yet? No, not yet. I only have um, some like nonprofit internships that are part-time uh, to bring that like real world experience to my portfolio. 
right. Okay, cool. And when is your, what is your plan for that then? When are you planning to start applying? I think in two weeks when I have a better um, understanding of like the impact that I've been having with these, with these internships and like the projects that I have so that when I interview, it's, you know, it's like I haven't actually contributed to something that's been pitched, but like I, I am part of something that is being pitched. Yeah. Awesome. I agree. It's great that you've already set yourself up with those, uh, with that work. I think that's amazing. Part three that I'm going to uh, recommend that you focus on is taking this work that you've done uh, online and take it offline. So this is putting in th into the form of a presentation. So we're going to prepare you to have this ready for when you're going to go into those interviews. So uh, again, your online portfolio, it's the short story of you and your work. The offline portfolio is the long story of you and your work. So this means including a couple slides at the beginning about you, about your story, how it relates to design. But I want you to bring all of this, all this work and put it into a presentation, whether it's a PDF, whether it's Keynote, whether it's Google Slides. Uh, you know, technically Google Slides is online, but, you know, um, it's in a presentation <laughs> so, uh So you'll have that ready when you go in an interview. Uh, you'll you'll have uh, you'll have that ready because it's very likely that they're going to have you present your work and just presenting your work from your website is often not the best form to do it. So this will hopefully help prepare you to think through how you're going to tell it uh, and and get you ready to just like nail that interview. So, <laughs> like okay, <laughs> got this. Yeah, I'm like super excited. Uh, I'd love for you to start looking at that and uh, that will be a part of what I want to talk about in our next, the next meeting that we, when we talk. Okay. Sounds good. For the offline portfolio, do you ever have like a suggestion as to like, not, not how many slides, but like how much time that you think it would take for me to go through, uh, um, go through portfolio, the offline portfolio? Yeah. Good question. So as far as like the amount of slides goes, like that's totally up to you because like, if you want to sort of try to animate stuff in it, cause you're presenting, like that might take more slides. Like I remember for my intro slides, like I was trying to ex um, explain where I was from and so I'd reveal a new city at every time that I would say it. And so that was four slides just to show that information. Um, but it's really like really quick, right? So the amount of slides is really gonna, gonna just depend on how you like to present. Um, as far as time goes, it's likely your portfolio review, it's very likely the portfolio review interview will be anywhere between 30 to 60 minutes and so I think that like if you're gonna really create this thing build this thing out build it out for an hour but have a strategy for how you can cut it down to 30 minutes and so like a 30 minute portfolio review is probably presenting one project an hour is probably two I think that's what I would recommend for you typically like if you're doing a shorter interview like maybe it's 45 minutes right if you're doing a shorter interview sometimes like telling one full case study project takes a long time uh, and so you might just present that one project, but sometimes when people like still want to see if you know a certain skill or get a sense of like how you would explain something that they're still unsure of about, about you and, or your work, they'll ask you to present that second one. And so it's just always good to have it handy. Uh, but typically you like, you want to have two because they might want to see more of your work, but you might just go through the one anyway. Cool. I think that's it from me for this f first call. For me, I think a lot of like students, you know, not just in the program, but like students in general, like you're saying, have this common problem of like just like showing everything because I think we're, we're trying to show like we know this, <laughs> you know, so I think it's helpful to to approach it from like a standpoint of like, like just take for granted that they know you know this and then see how you can make this more unique um, and like more engaging. Yeah, yeah, because it is. It's all about selling yourself. And like, if you can come off as like a super legit qualified designer, because you are, and get them excited about that, then like, then you're in. And then you have your other thing prepared. You have your offline portfolio with all that stuff prepared, and you're going to present it and you're all just right. going to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. I will talk to you again very soon then. Okay. Okay. Bye. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you too. Take care. If you haven't already, you should subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you like this video, definitely give it a like. I think that's all for now. Bye. I see a lot of the same patterns, and uh, I think what's happening is that it's not that people don't have high quality work, it's that they're not uh, telling the right story at the right time. <laughs>